Always remember to peel all the film off of your printers. Looking at clogged nozzles and retraction issues, some bamboo failures, as well as an interesting resin fail. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 82. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here and you like this kind of thing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. Greatly appreciate it. Remember, we are accepting your print fails. So if you want to get your failures looked at by myself or any of the team at 3D Musketeers, make sure to hit us up on all the social medias. You can slide into those DMs, use the hashtag print fix, or you can email me directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, where we'll take a look. And if we remember, add it into the next Friday's video. We greatly appreciate everybody's support in these videos. Remember, if you do want to support us financially, we have those options via PayPal, Patreon, and YouTube channel members with options starting as low as $1 on some of those tiers. On a $10 tier and higher, you get access to our Discord server where we hang out with a bunch of our fans constantly. We're always in there on video, hanging out, having fun, whether we're playing video games, editing videos, or just raging after live streams where all of my packets drop and we call my ISP live. Anyways, greatly appreciate any support you guys would like to give to the channel, but hey, we get it. You might not have anything to give and a like, subscribe, and a comment doesn't cost you anything but a couple of seconds of your time and helps the overlord algorithm let people know that our video is one they should be watching too. Greatly appreciate any assistance that you guys can give to the channel, but enough of that. Back to looking at some print fails and how to fix them. We got a fail from a fan, Rick, who actually sent in his failure via email. Remember, you can email us, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, to send in your print failures for having me to take a look. This is PETG. Rick's been doing some work on his printer, new SKR board, but he's having an issue with supports and bridging. You can see here some really bad bridging on the part itself, as well as some rough top layers. Being PETG, it is much pickier than PLA. And a lot of this comes down to cooling. Specifically here, I would just have all of this be supported. I wouldn't be trying to bridge this over troubled thin air. I would look at going through and actually supporting it. They are using Super Slicer, so you might be able to use their snug supports. I believe Super Slicer has snug supports now. They definitely don't have organic yet. Snug support should take care of this no problem. And with enough cooling, PETG will be better. But on bridging, often we find that PETG needs to be under extruded down to 0.9 and in some of our printers, we go all the way down to 0.82 for bridging. Mess around with those settings because they're going to be a little bit different for your printer and your application versus our printers and our applications, but it is something to keep in mind. Always have more cooling. And looking at this top surface, this is absolutely a cooling issue. PETG sometimes loves cooling, sometimes hates cooling. You're going to have to really dial that in depending on how much cooling that you have. We find that on the Prusus, I can run as much cooling as I want and it works perfectly. But looking at some of our larger machines like our Fusion 3 F410, PETG does not want a lot of cooling at all on that machine because its cooling has way more air getting right to the parts. So we're actually ending up overcooling the part as well. Play around with your cooling settings. Obviously here, look at some support settings, I think. I don't know if I'd be bridging all of this. Bridging to me is not supposed to be all of this, right? Bridging is supposed to be little small gaps. And I know a lot of people love to do those big, huge, ridiculous bridges. I just can't get behind it because it's impractical to me, especially when you consider that those bridges are not going to have great side to side layer bonding and line bonding that you would have in something that does have support material. Yes, I know that can create a crappier bottom surface utilizing support material, but at the end of the day, I'd rather have a stronger part that isn't as pretty than a weaker part that is show offy. I, I guess. Let me know your thoughts about that because I'd love to know. I'm a support all the things kind of guy because I'd rather have success than deal with failure. But I know some people really prefer to tune in their bridging and props to you guys because some of your work is pretty darn amazing. This is going to be cooling. This is going to be bridging and potentially for top layers, the amount of top layers that you have and the percentage of infill. If you don't have enough infill, you're not giving that PETG enough time to really cool and you're doing a bunch of bridges. Try out the latest Prusa Slicer Alpha 2.6 because I do believe you might get better results with this than you will with something like Super Slicer. Just something to know. Help needed, please. Configuration and settings in the comments. 
Let's take a look. These uneven layers and wavy marks developed after I replaced the hot end inside the sprite extruder. I can't tell if it's over extrusion, wrong e-step calibration, or something physical to do with the hot end slash greater printer. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I will post more settings if requested. Ender 3 Pro with custom firmware. Eh. Cura. We have modifications with a dual Z, Creality Sprite Hot End, Sierra Touch, Big Tree Tech V3 Silent Boat. At this point, the only thing that's stock on the dang thing is the extrusions that are used for it. Slice settings, we got flow at 100%, print temp at 220, bed at 60, walls are three, infill is 30, layer height is 0.2, nozzle is 0.4, E-step extruder is 430. Let's take a look at the model. This is going to be an issue with your retraction. Pretty much a guarantee here. Other than that, it's white filament, and I really have an issue with white filament. It shows a lot of problems that don't exist. Like these lines here, I don't think are that big of a deal. And I think with most other colors, you wouldn't notice them at all. But it only takes a very small line that is out of where it needs to be for white filament to show what appears to be a massive problem that is never going to get better. This, though, is going to be your retraction setting. So take a look and see when you did all of these upgrades. Did you adjust your retraction settings to be more appropriate for your direct drive extruder or is it still ones that are appropriate for a Bowden system? Direct drive needs somewhere under a millimeter generally for its retraction, where Bowden printers will need somewhere from four to seven millimeters, so considerably more. That has to do more with how the hot ends and systems function on those more affordable machines. But it is something to note when you do go to a direct drive setup, it's something you got to look into. Now, I'm not certain if Creality sells the Sprite without the extruder, but a quick Google shows me all of them with extruders. So I'm going to assume this is a direct drive setup. Check to make sure that your settings are looking good because I have a feeling that we've got a ramming problem. So what will happen is that when you pull filament out of the hot end and it gets cold and you try to force it back in, it's not going to heat up fast enough to get extruded when you need it to. Yes, when the printer is running, you can print it 60 to 70 millimeters a second without any issues. And on some faster machines, much, much faster than that. In fact, we talked about one of the newest ones on the market, the Prusa Mark IV. In Wednesday's video, we'll card to it so you guys can take a look. And of course, a lot of you know the Bamboo Lab printers, the P1P X1 Carbon. Of course, we have the Voron. And any printer that really runs clipper or utilizes input shaper they're able to get much faster speeds off of these relatively simple hot end designs we get limited by acceleration and resonance in the printers to get them to move faster and that's why input shaping is pretty awesome but looking at this I'm going to go with it's a retraction thing. If you're trying to push that filament through, it's not heating up fast enough. And we'll generally skip a little bit. I'd be curious to see what it sounds like when you are printing. If you hear any clicking from the extruder or if your filament is grinding at those places, check to make sure that your retractions are not very fast. 35 millimeters a second out and in should be more than adequate. And in fact, you can even lower the D retraction speed down to 20 or 25 if you find that it helps. Definitely check to make sure that your retraction settings are dialed in because going from Bowden to direct drive is a totally different world and can screw you up if you're not ready for the extra settings changes. Next up, fails my own. We've got some bamboo fails and I've got the bottles right here. These are some wood masks by Wexter in two of my favorite colors from Printed Solid. We have the green ice and the purple ice. Really nice colors, but uh, really rough prints, both on the same side. This is something that i am always been curious about with these machines because they only have cooling from one side. And what that means is that parts that are back here that are away from the cooling fan, which is on the left side of the printer, don't get anywhere near as much cooling. When you start running fast print speeds, you have to deal with extra cooling and a little 5015 blower fan is nowhere near adequate to handle the kind of print speeds that a bamboo printer can do. Unfortunately, they don't have adequate cooling and that's why the auxiliary fan exists. The problem is the auxiliary fan is only on one side, meaning that the pieces on both the green and the purple, sorry for the bad photo, have similar problems where they didn't cool well enough, likely curled up a little bit, and then the printer in a movement just knocked the part off the build plate. I added a skirt, I added a brim, you can see all the nice organic supports, and 
Hilariously, this one did actually catch spaghetti. Way, way farther than it occurred during the print, but you know, fine, whatever. At least it caught it before it wasted, I don't know, maybe a few grams more of filament. But I really like these and I was looking forward to printing some, but unfortunately, it does not appear that my bamboo in its current settings are up for the job. We could look at lowering our filament temperatures and all of that, but then we run into dealing with layer adhesion issues. So it is kind of a, how much can you get out of one of these systems? It might've been better for me to turn the entire part so the mask itself was facing that fan, but it wasn't something that I thought we would need. And when I'm running bone stock settings on the machine, you just kind of expect it to work. Running other printers, the bone stock settings are incredibly conservative and they're pretty much a guaranteed success. Where I find that the bamboo stock settings are turned up a lot higher and not really as well tuned as I would like for them to see. Now, before you get all up in arms regarding the filament that I'm using, yes, it is Jesse PLA, but I have adapters to go ahead and run that material inside of the bamboo. We will be doing a Hydra AMS for these relatively soon, so make sure to get subscribed. If that's the kind of thing that you want to see. And hey, let me know in those comments if you do want to see a Hydra AMS and what colors, because we've got a lot of colors and uh, I want to make it crazy looking, because if we're going to make some modifications, Let's have some fun with it, right? But this was a bit of a bummer when you are in a time crunch and I had totally forgotten to make these for the time lapse. So I had to quickly run it on the bamboo rather than giving the Prusa basically all the time in the world do it. You run into some of these potential problems. Thankfully, the purple one failed right as I was waking up because I was in some pain. So I went to check on the print and it was bad. So I quickly changed out the filament into the green, worked on the file a little bit more, and then sent it back to the printer to give it a shot. And unfortunately, no dice. Now I will say the failures both happened faster than an MK3S would have printed one of them. So there is something to note there. We were looking at about 16 hours on the Prusa versus six and a half on the bamboo. That is the benefit of input shaping and really printers that have the ability to do that. And now with the Prusa Mark IV, once they implement input shaping in what I'm assuming will be a beta firmware here relatively soon, I'll be curious to see a bamboo versus a Mark IV side by side for not only speed, but quality and sound. The Mark IV seems really quiet where our bamboo is running. And if I do take off the noise filter on my microphone, you will hear it. It's quite loud. Next up, a fail from the Lychee Slicer Discord, something that surprised both myself and Mr. Chris Catlett. This is one of the more interesting fails that we've seen in a while. We've seen this happen with people and their computers where they forget to peel off the protective covering on their heatsink for their CPU and they're wondering why their temps are so high. This individual forgot to remove the protective film on their build plate, but you know, it actually held up pretty well, all things considered. So thankfully, other than a bruised ego and dealing with a little bit of lost resin, not a lot of damage done here. When you are working on a brand new printer, especially a resin printer, make sure you remove all that protective plastic that is going to impede your printing process. This one, one of the more interesting ones that we've seen in a while. And as the individual said, they are 100% an idiot. You're not an idiot. It's a honest God mistake. It's totally fine, but hey, at least you'll know you'll never make it again. Speaking of never making mistakes like that again, we had one of our Patreon members in our Discord server at the $10 tier and higher, of course, get the SV06 Plus, but we mentioned in a previous Print Fix Friday, and I believe it was actually last week, to make sure that you check the voltage on your printer itself. And this individual, DK Shadow, unfortunately had their set to 240. It likely came set to 240 from the factory. When they were trying to heat things up, the printer was just shutting down. Down. And normally I would say that's indicative of a short, but it's actually indicative of a power supply not providing enough power, which might lead you to believe it's a short, but it's actually the power supply being set to the wrong voltage. It's fine. But now they actually ended up getting a multimeter to check all the fuses and everything. But I said, before you start probing, check to make sure the power supply voltage is set correctly. And their exact reply, this is just embarrassing. We've all been there before. I hate it when it happens to me. 
And we do these videos, so hopefully it doesn't happen to you as well. But leave a comment down below. Let me know if it's ever happened to you and the steps that you've gone through before you realized it was simply just a voltage switch. I don't want to make fun of anybody because I literally had this happen at a client's house. So imagine the egg on my face when I'm sitting there going through all this extra BS when in actuality it was just flick a switch and the printer worked perfectly fine. When you're doing it on your own, you only got your own ego to deal with. When you're doing it in front of somebody that is paying you, you feel like an absolute idiot. And I ended up never actually charging that client because I felt so stupid that I spent all of this time chasing a dragon that wasn't an actual problem. And because I've never heard from them again, I have a feeling that printer's working just fine. Next up, another bamboo fail another one of my own. These are some parts that I can't exactly talk about, but I can show you the failure that occurs in it. This is again, another cooling issue that I'm dealing with on the bamboo. We've got some overhangs here that are really just struggling to work well. When we look at the underside of the circles themselves, we have the exact same problem. It is consistent across both sides. Again, this is a cooling issue. Otherwise, this part looks great, other than some warped corners, but I think that's more about my bed prep on there. I'm still learning that particular PEX plate. But yeah, it's like the, the cooling is just not sufficient on them. So I would love to see you know, if it was open source, some cooling mods that we could do to the bamboo, but because it's not open source, I might actually have to 3D scan it and give the 3D scans out to the community so that we can try to build something that works better than the stock cooling solution. This part was printed completely perpendicular to the fan travel itself because I said, well, I want good cooling, but I've got basically areas that need better cooling on every part of this and before you say grant why didn't you just print it flat these holes are not straight they're at a very odd angle and the client wanted to have a smooth surface because this part mounts like this they didn't want any of the stair stepping that you would get with printing and i had thought about doing something like adaptive layer height but it didn't work out the way that i was expecting and it wasn't as smooth as printing it standing up the way that you see it potentially we could have looked at other orientations or just printing it on a different printer but i've been trying to put my bamboo lab x1 carbon through its paces to see is this thing really good or am I just dealing with a bunch of different problems? Let me know in those comments what you guys think we could do to solve this. Is this just me having bad settings? I was running 225. I was running bone stock settings for the poly light PLA settings because I find that that works the best. They're generic PLA. I don't like the settings for that. The Polymaker Polylight PLA seems to work best. I'd love to know your thoughts. I am going to be trying Orca Slicer here relatively soon. I've been wanting to try it on bone stock firmware, bone stock hardware, bone stock slicer as much as we possibly can. So if there are any things that could be better, I experience those later once I'm used to dealing with its quirks to see how much better those new solutions are. Last up, are my prints over cured? No, your prints are actually dirty. This is a resin print, and it's got a lot of what we would look at as blooming on it. Traditionally, you will see blooming when you deal with something like a cyanoacrylate, where it will leave that white powder on stuff. But blooming in resin that looks like this is actually resin that wasn't washed off. You might not have an appropriate cleaning setup. If you are comfortable, go get some chemical gloves and some cheap toothbrushes and really go at your parts, especially ones like this where you want them to look really crystal clear. I believe this is a Stanley Cup model, maybe? Is that the Philadelphia Flyers logo? Nope. It's not, I don't know anything about hockey. <laughs> but you definitely wanna make sure that your parts are feeling clean. What we like to do is, if it is a really critical part, we wash it in alcohol. If your alcohol isn't very clean, you're gonna have issues with this problem of leftover resin stuck on the parts themselves. If you are worried about excess resin, do not cure your parts yet. You can go through and scrub it down as much as you want as long as you're in the cleaning cycle. That's fine. But as soon as you start to cure it, this is pretty much impossible to get rid of. You can look at sanding it down to remove it, but it is going to be a nightmare to deal with. You can try if you want to rewash it with alcohol, but this resin is likely stuck on it. It might be best at this point, if it's not a model that needs to be clear, because I don't think this is clear resin, just paint it. Paint should hide a lot of this blooming issue, but you might see some texture on the surface from that excess resin that is stuck on the part itself. 
So, bit of a bummer. I've been there before. We do really clean a lot with Mean Green, but on parts that are super critical when it comes to their service finish, we do often clean with an alcohol bath. As much as I love these Wash and Cure stations, and this is a Wash and Cure Plus, I have one. Absolutely love it. I think they are pivotal for resin printing. When we do wash in alcohol, we actually end up using buckets for it. Similar to a two bucket method for washing a car, we have a two bucket method for cleaning parts. We have a dirty alcohol bath that takes care of most of the contaminants. Then we go into a clean alcohol bath with a toothbrush to really scrub it down. We find that that gives us the best quality parts possible when surface finish matters. But generally speaking, the Mean Green does a great job, and one of the great things that I love about it versus alcohol is that the resin is considerably heavier and falls out of solution, so it is way easier to strain off than dealing with alcohol. A lot of people will be looking at using things like stills to distill out the alcohol from that raw resin, but I do not recommend that at all because one, fire hazard, two, resin is toxic, come on, you knew we had to do that, but three, just no, it's so cheap. Just buy new alcohol. That's why I like the Mean Green at five bucks a gallon. It's a great price and we get a lot of uses out of it because again, the alcohol doesn't stay suspended in the fluid. It falls out of solution. It's actually pretty easy to pick back up with either a peristaltic pump a turkey baster or just filtering out with a fine mesh strainer. That's really all I have for you guys today. Let me know down in those comments what you thought of these fails. If there are any types of failures you'd like to see us cover more in Print Fix Friday because I want to start looking more at just a few failures a week and how we can really dial in those fixes. So let me know what you guys would like to see here on Print Fix Friday. Thank you guys again for watching. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your love ones don't forget to leave a like and as always keep making awesome have a good one and yeah been there before i'm 100 an idiot no god don't you are not allowed to use that but hey thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank goes out to all of our patreon youtube channel member and now paypal supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the five dollar tier and higher remember if you want to join the elite group of musketeers come hang out with us in the discord you can do that for as low as one dollar a month discord ten bucks a month or higher. We have a great community. We'd love to have you join us. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where we look at failures and how to fix them. Right next to that will be the printer maintenance series so you can keep your printers running in tip-top shape. I'll see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Click those videos. Take care.